my name is Claire Luswan. I'm, uh, I'm an anthropologist, a filmmaker, and a dancer, and I'm a visiting research fellow at Goldsmith University. And um, first, I just before I wanted to start, I actually wanted um, to ask all of you to really pay attention to your body and your body sensation, but also the space around you uh, while I'm talking and what you're listening and watching me. And I'd like you to, for example, it could be just um, touch, you know, how, what you're touching as you're sitting, you know, how you close that touch in your skin, but also the sounds beyond my voice, the sound in a room, outside the room. And similar to what Catherine has been inviting, I'd like you to really listen to your body. And, you, and I really would like you to invite you to feel comfortable to just go in any position you want to go. You might have seen me earlier finding, trying to relax and <laughs> I find it really hard to be fixed watching the screen. So please be relaxed. I won't, um, I won't take that uh, badly if you want to change your position. So my invitation to you is, can you keep your awareness to all of this as you're listening and watching me? And, and how can you receive what I'm talking about from your body? And the reason why I'm asking this is that I'm going to talk about how to remain more embodied with the screen. And current research point out that uh, when we're using the screen, um, our attention is distracted away. And, and we're not so much aware of what's going on around us. And maybe it's happened to you before that you're in a street and there's someone really absorbing their phone and they're walking towards you and they have no idea that you're in the front of them. So that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. But what I'm gonna argue here is that we can actually reconcile, you know, being with the screen, our body and the environment. Before this, I'm saying that we need to gradually question our relationship to the screen as a movement practice in its own right as a movement practice that asks, how can I connect with others via the screen? Because that's what we do. Well, without losing awareness to our own body and the environment around where we are right now. And you might want to, to keep that in mind as you are listening and watching me. And I explore this question in a series of movement class that offered on Zoom during the lockdown. And really the aim for me of the class was, how can we find a creative opportunity in this uh, medium that uh, has obvious limits. So we used to, to teach movement or, or practice movement in a physical space where we're all together. And when we're on Zoom, we can say, ah, oh, it's not the same. It doesn't work the way it usually does. So rather than to fight with us, like, how can we just move and discover what this, this medium is, what it has to offer? So I really invited people to, to explore that medium. And, and what really felt unique about Zoom is that we weren't just dancers and movers on Zoom. Suddenly we became filmmaker and camera operators that we wanted it or not, because the way we, f we were in the screen was framing how we moved. So, and that was due to the cell view feature, which is like a mirror. So we can see ourselves. but the interesting thing is that if projected to others, we can see our own image and then vice versa, we can see their own image that they're seeing. So I'm arguing that Zoom is offering this unusual situation of moving selfies in dialogue where dance and filmmaker converge. Um, and when we can, we are practicing screen dance in an immediate and in interactive manner. So I'm gonna quickly uh, demonstrate some of those things. And if you want, you can, if you're not, your video is not turned on, you can do that. But, some of the things I, I invited people to do is just to realize how you're moving in space is changing what's happening on street and the effect it, it happens when you're much closer or much further away. If I just want one part of my body in the screen or not, but also as I'm moving in space, I realized that there is a field of view of the screen and it really changed our interact with the space. And I know where the border is when I'm in shots and when I'm not. And kind of, so that also shape how I'm moving with the space and I'm more aware of that. And also working with just having the camera in different position and just also kind of just exploring what that change in terms of what we're doing. And the last one is also moving with the frame as, you know, another way is not just a fixed frame, but it's something that I'm interacting with. So I'm just, that, that's some of the things that we explored. And, and it felt really necessary to get a feel of a medium 
But then what became really obvious is by really interacting with a screen, it was also narrowing our attention away from our own bodies and, and what was going on around. It was suddenly, um, it's like our body and the environment only existed on screen. It was just the only thing that was interesting. Um, and that was exacerbated by the cell view uh, feature that made people more self-conscious, but also it, 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 like, it created a divide. It was like my own image. Well, the idea I have of myself was different from my body and what I was feeling. Um, so this becomes, well, I agree, is this becomes a situation where we focus so much on being self in relation to others via the screen that we focus that we also self in relation to the environment, that we are a, bo a body, what I call a body among the seeing. And this idea of a body among the seeing, a body that is not external to it, comes from my practicing Amerta movement with um, the Indonesian movement artist. Suprapto Suryodamo and also Sandra Reeve, who is in the UK. And I brought this practice to the Zoom environment and I developed three concepts from it. And the first one is what I call seeing with the whole body. The second one is moving with a sense of diffuse awareness. And the third one is body as a shape, shape shifting frame. And seeing with the whole body is really the idea that in the West we have um, this bias that vision is the primary sense that we perceive everything. And we sort of undermine over the role of other senses, but also the role of the whole body beyond the eyes in how we receive the world. Um, and the frame, interestingly, is even more restricted. This idea of perception is only focal and visual because it's restricted to, to the frame. So I really wanted people to understand that we're working with the, the bias of, of what that is. And I work with a lot of different ideas, but I'll just quickly describe two of them that I work with. And the first one is that I used um, my own practice of what I call embodied filmmaking. And, and one of them is just really simple. It's just when I'm filming with a camera, I'm, I'm using, I'm really learning to to move with a camera as my dance partner. And the practice is actually to learn to, to dance with this object, learning the balance, what is this object, but also being aware that this object has an eye that is seeing out. And the practice is just to not look through the viewfinder, so more just have an awareness of where it's pointing. And also um, have the awareness that when I'm moving in this way, I'm holding the audience in my hand. And how do I want the audience to feel as I'm moving? And sometimes I want to challenge them. Sometimes I want to be very gentle. Um, and then the second one is that I created a series of movement score for participants to experience synesthesia in seeing. The fact that when we see, all the senses also play a, a part in our experience of seeing, but we have no way of it. And in, in order to make that, um, more part of for people to experience that. I, I did very simple school, but that just required time to experience. So I just asked people to close their eyes and just really experience, for example, touch and the different quality of touch. So it could be like really touching the wood that is really hard, but also the sense of air that is much softer. And then my clothes that are also a bit more fluid. And then the fact that what's the difference between the active touch, I'm going to touch something and a passive touch or something that's touching me and just really going through, guiding them to go through in details. And then after a while, asking them to open their eyes and just keep asking them to keep those sensation and then just taking sight if it's too much, close your eyes again, then come back and then inviting them to keep those two things at the same time, which could be quite overwhelming for people. It will be a big shift when the eyes would be open. So before I carry on further, I just would like to remind you what I asked you at the beginning and just checking with yourself, how are you feeling in your own body and what do you need right now? And what's your awareness of what's happening also behind you on the side or and the second concept I'm going to talk about is moving with a sense of diffuse awareness. And it comes back to this idea I 
I, I was saying that we have this tendency to, to pay attention in a visual and focal manner to what's happening. And obviously the screen totally exacerbates that, but we're less aware of that we also pay attention to what's around us in a non-visual and, and um, non-focused manner. So the practice of moving a sense of diffuse awareness is quite simple, but it's very overwhelming. It's, it's more the idea that there's lots of things that are happening. As I say, there's a great variety of touch, but it's the same with sounds, some's coming far, closer, as the sensation on my body, maybe the old pain I have, and then these thoughts and feeling and trying to keep all these things in mind, being aware of a space behind me, not just what's in front of me. And overall, we can never, how to say, hold all these things in our awareness at the same time. It's like a, a, a practice you can never achieve. By encouraging people to do that, I wanted them to give equal value to their body, the environment and the screen. And just be aware that the screen and what happens on screen is just one element of what's happening. And also by doing that, it was helping them to realize when they, to notice when they will give too much attention to something and lose awareness of other things. So it's more to sort of be aware. So there's no right and wrong. It's just more be aware when we losing that awareness or when we're making those choices. So we have more choices by knowing we're making them. And the last concept I want to talk about is this body as a shape-shifting frame, which is basically the idea that we are the frame ourselves. We're not external to it. As we you know, I'm looking at this frame and I think I'm, um, I'm not a frame, but I am, and I'm also shaping it with my body. So it's the idea that we're always seeing the world from the perspective of our body, its senses, its memories, its social and cultural conditioning. And filmmaking is actually a very useful practice to become more aware of this process of framing within us. And filmmaker and anthropologist David McDougall has a very nice concept that, that say the concept of corporal images and to say that as filmmaker, we carry the imprint of an image, um, our image carry the imprint of our own bodies, the body that is behind the camera and its relationship to the people that we were or the world we're working with. Um, and that often, when you watch a film, you can sense, you know, you can sense the body behind, behind the camera. So when we film, we're always feeling from a subjective perspective that we're aware or not of that. Um, and it's basically, it's the same without the camera. So working with the camera and the screen of them, somehow it's useful to bring up to ourselves our own framing that we put onto the world is the idea that we are moving camera ourselves. So I try to get people to, to, to move with that in mind and also realize that they are, we are a three dimensional being. So we're not just this, two, this flight screen. So I'm receiving the world, not just from the sight and my eyes, but from all direction. And, and also my framing is changing, shaping, and it also really changed depending on where I am in the world. And it's becoming more aware that I'm also part of a bigger, uh, bigger composition, that we are in constant dialogue and co-creation with the environment, so becoming more aware of that. So to conclude, I would just like to make three points, which is, as I just explained somehow, moving on Zoom, but also filmmaking is a way to critically reflect and bring to awareness our own habits of framing the world and its biases. Um, and then the second point I'd like to make is that the screen doesn't make us disembodied per se, but it accentuates an existing lack of awareness in the role of a body in seeing, and, and also it accentuates this lack of awareness of our own biases in, in perceiving and thinking that the uh, focal vision is, is our main mode, but somehow, the screen is also amplifying this problem and, and it gives us, as I say, an opportunity to, to, to look into it. And somehow for me, there is creative opportunity in that and to bring other ways of, of doing this. And then lastly, beyond Zoom, I'm interested in how we can be more critical of our use of technology from a body perspective, but questioning it through movement in a way that um, enhance our physical abilities rather than constrain them. 
So therefore, how can we bring the body more at the heart of how we interact with technology? And how can we keep a more critical body-centered thinking attitude? Um, and I'd like just to come back to what I invited you to do at the beginning and how was that journey of just keeping track of how you were with yourself as you were listening and watching me. And there is no right or wrong with that. There is just a noticing. So just remind that. And very last, I will just say that I'll be really de delighted to hear any feedback and anyone interested in similar questions. So please do get in touch. And I'm also going to be running a new series of workshop on this moving with the screen. So if you have any interest with that, do get in touch as well. <laughs>